Good morning. Hope you're all good. Just on our way back from morning sessions in Marlborough, which was from home as well. So we had the 12 days of Christmas workout today. Um, before that, a one-to-one -one as well in the morning. So wanted to talk about, this is quite a deep question actually. Why am I not feeling satisfied? And I, I'm going to go down a few different routes with this. Good morning, Sunny. How are you? Lovely morning, by the way. The sun is, the blue sky is coming through. Anyway, so morning, Judith. Why am I not feeling satisfied? So I'm going to start off with this from a physiological point of view. Morning, Sue. Hope you're all good. Give me a hello if you're coming in. So from a physiological point of view, and I'm going to come at this from the angle of which I think they were asking it from, which is more around satisfaction to do with food and hunger in the evening. And I may have said these points before, but I'm going to say them again, because sometimes we're in a different space when we hear different things. And sometimes we take the advice differently at different times in our life, in terms of our day, it depends on our energy and our mood. So the physiological side of it, sometimes we can be maybe a bit dopamine deficient in the evenings, maybe in the afternoons, maybe we haven't satisfied ourselves enough nutritionally during the day whether that's because we skip breakfast and try and undo a lot of quote-unquote bad work over the weekend where we maybe we've overeaten over drank if that's a thing um, and as a result of that we try to compensate by eating as little as we can now this works for a lot of people in terms of just going in sharp hit but if you do have ongoing issues with food and your relationship with food and you're eating to make yourself feel good, which is fine by the way if it does make you feel good, but then you end up overeating and thinking, sod it, I've failed, I may as well just eat more. Then we've got to consider, and then you feel rubbish, then we've got to consider, okay, do we need to just take a step back and make sure we're hitting our nutrient needs in the day? and getting our blood sugar levels a bit stable, nourishing our body, making sure we're actually giving ourselves dopamine, satisfaction at meals, whether that means having breakfast, sitting down, having breakfast, making sure we're getting some protein at that meal, whether that could be something like an omelette, whether that's porridge, and maybe even um, stirring in a scoop um, of protein powder at the end, or even a dollop of Greek yogurt, that also makes it quite creamy as well, it can be quite nice, just don't cook it, obviously. Um, getting some protein in there. Then at lunchtime, are we getting some vegetables in? Are we getting some protein in? Whether that's a soup or some shredded chicken on or whatever. Like, you can get creative with it. If you need ideas, let me know. And, got loads of recipe books. So, with that, making sure again, we're getting satisfaction in. Can you get a little bit of crunch in your meal? Do you want a jacket potato, but you're going, oh, I can't eat carbs? Because sometimes just having it, you know, it might add in 200 calories in, but if that keeps you more satisfied, and then mid-afternoon, you're, say, actually not that hungry, not that thinking, oh, I can have something else now. That might actually suit you better because let's face it, mid-afternoon, what are we gonna grab? I can guarantee most of the time it's things that aren't as actually nutritious as a jacket potato, which has 100% of your vitamin C in it. Look at that. Not to mention potassium. So there are a lot of nutrients in it. Anyway. It's not for, remember, this isn't personal advice, this is just going over why we might not be satisfied. Then, if it is that mid-afternoon, you've got to consider, if you are eating enough, how much of it is a habit? How much of it is related to the way you feel? Have you exercised? Have you got outside for a walk today? Because why am I not feeling satisfied isn't always related to food. And that's coming from a nutritionist as well. So you would say, you could say, I should be biased and say, no, it's all down to do with gluten, dairy, red meat, your cholesterol, but sometimes just as simple as we're tired, we're low on energy, we haven't done something for ourselves for a while, we keep putting everyone else first and then wondering why we feel rubbish, which actually sometimes results in us, sounds weird, but resenting other people that we actually love because we're putting them first. We're choosing to put them, set them first, we're then resenting them a little bit because we not, have no time for us. And what I'll say this, we're doing a little challenge at the moment in our support group, and it's really simple task that will take you one minute. And the power of one minute is 
it's a small, it's a, it's a small task, but just because it's small, it doesn't mean it's not meaningful. And that's like talking about a one minute workout, like a one minute work, one minute of boxing, squatting, walking, getting some fresh air outside can make such a difference to the way you feel. And I think that's a powerful reminder in just how much how you feel and how satisfied you feel you are is only a state, a state that's, that you can change very quickly. I can say yesterday, one of the ladies who came to our session in the morning in Devizes, she was like, I've never been to a new new place, like, you know, somewhere like this that just does kind of real small, private, ladies only sessions. And she said, I felt all my anxiety and kind of worries were just at ease straight away. And it's and she had a great workout, it was great to feel get a bit hot again, push myself a bit. And that feeling of accomplishment after. And that was literally 30 minute session. And if you think how powerful that is to changing how satisfied we are and how simple that can be that we can do it. And then if you consider just how much we, we build it up, we build up these things to be often harder than they actually are. We put things together maybe based on past experiences Maybe it's that voice in our head saying that we can't do it. But I can pretty much always guarantee that you'll feel better after you're doing it. Anyway, back to our um, physiological side of it. So we then get to our evening meal. And sometimes something comes up that your family eats together a little bit later or earlier. And there's that time where you're hungry. Again, it comes back down to are we actually eating enough at breakfast and lunch? Could you, if you eat quite late, maybe structure in like a late afternoon snack, but plan it. And it doesn't have to be snacky foods just because I'm calling it a snack. It could be a small meal, some soup, like something the way you can sit down and actually have it and enjoy it rather than just pick in the fridge, standing up, pick, pick, pick. And I get it, I've done it too. That's partly why when I pick the girls up from nursery and it's like half free when we get back, I actually get dinner on straight away then and we just have an early dinner. Otherwise, they're raiding the fridge until five o'clock and then we eat dinner and it's like, we just raided the fridge. And another chat for another day, but I have spoken about this before. I think it's quite important for kids to actually be in tune with their hunger. And if I create an environment where they're making good choices in terms of there's veggies in there, there's fruit in there, there's yogurts in there, there's cheese in there, there's some cold meats, there's olives, there's a real range of foods in there frozen berries, strawberries, banana, whatever. I just let them go with it because their body will just tell them what they need. Now, back to it, the timing could be quite key for because then if I have a meal then, I'm then fairly satisfied and I might just have maybe something later in the evening if, I'm, if I just want something sweet. And as I said, that's okay. If you're, you know, with Christmas coming up as well, we can go, oh, I don't want to have that. There's loads of sweets, chocolates everywhere. Am I just eating to feel better? That's okay, if it does make you feel better. Like I said the other day, I had a glass of wine on Friday night. And at the time, it made me feel better. It was quite nice. But the day after, I thought, wow, I can't actually believe. Like, I haven't drank in a while. I actually feel rough. Like, I was like, what's going on? It's like a wine glass back in, back in my heyday. You'll hate me for saying that. I used to, I could put away a lot more than that. Now I'm like, it's like if I have one glass or one bottle, it's the same, feel rough. And right now there's other things more important to me that satisfy me more than waking up hungover for the sake of a few drinks. That's just for me. Might not be the same for you and that's okay too. It's important to remember that. So consider an evening. If you're eating to make yourself feel better, but it's not making you feel better, then consider, okay, what, what would satisfy you at that time? Maybe you need to take some time for you. Whether that's have a nice warm bath, whether that's get a new face mask, not face covering, like a face mask is in like a beauty face mask. Just to, had to clarify that, just in case you thought the other way. So get something that you look forward to in the evening. Maybe whatever it is, it's got to be personal to you. Meditation, I, I, face mask, space mask, they're quite cool warmth over your eyes if you haven't ever tried them but something like that that you can look forward to that's just non-food related sometimes so i hope that helps any questions on that do let me know
And if you want more information on our 20 day kickstart that starts in January the 4th, January the 4th, give me a message, devices, Marlborough, or you can do it all from home. Speak soon. Take care.